Wow. Good evening, Jan. Kiko, how, how are, are you? you? Good, and you? <laughs> Here we are. Here we are again. Again and again. And this Every is day, wonderful. Every day, at 6 o'clock from and the Cannon Club. I'm in control of the music, and I can start lowering the little bit here. We're getting this into a totally operational two people. Yeah, very good. Studio. Yeah. Anyway, we're here, and so, it's, what day is it today? Well, today is a Saturday. And we have a very special program because I think, uh, there we go, you got it? Yep. It's off. So. I hope. Not yet. Not quite. Well, anyway. anyway. So, right. we're going to have um, Nico, Nico Hueso, Domenico Hueso. Domenico Hueso is Jan de Sopo's grandson who is a wonderful musician. He's a very accomplished. He's accomplished violinist, I'm the oldest. The oldest. Yes. And Every runs in the family. <laughs> I'm so so she also has a performer in her family besides her being an artist. Um, Domenico I know since he was a little boy. And I had the, uh, the privilege to play with him last year. We did um, uh, a chamber music concert in uh, Ponce. Yeah. He was a violist, and uh, he was wonderful, wonderful. And we well, were looking he was forward on schedule to come this, to year, come this well. year, but, but of course, Ponce has been Ponce canceled, has been canceled so among other things. He's definitely a canceled performer. Yeah, <laughs> but he will be with us the uh, following year for sure. Yeah, yeah. Well, for sure, when we, we get this we all really but enjoyed anyway, working. On playing everything with is going yeah. along perfectly, right. except I lost my earbud. <laughs> I'm too blind to find it. But anyway, Anyways, um, so uh, and Nico is based in San Diego, and as I said before, he's a very active uh, performer in the area, uh, freelancer, and uh, he's really a wonderful young musician. He's really making a living out of this in the West yeah, Coast. And I think yeah. uh, we'll ask him. He was just recently featured in this airport. Uh, musical connection. Well, I don't know how many. Anyway, Nico, it's time to bring you in. Where are you? There he is. There, there's the Hi, guy. Nico. There's Hi. the guy. How are you? Holy, uh, you look well, like you're ready to how play. Are you all? Oh, we're we're great. We're uh. happy to share a little music, a little chit chat, and from the cultural world. And you're in California, and we're, you're in San Diego, and we're in San Juan. Correct. Uh, yes, indeed. Yes, and uh, since uh, uh, thank you for that lovely introduction, and it was truly a joy to play alongside uh, Kiko, and uh, to really uh, convey and capture such intimate music of the Warjak piano quintet, uh, his final one, of course. So, with that said, I thought I would compliment with the American string quartet to start us all off. Oh, good! A little music Wonderful. to start off. Let's start with music. Yeah. So Nico's figured Some fireworks, out. if you will. Good. Sure. <laughs> Thank you. 
the audience what was that piece? That's Dvorak. Uh, that was the American String Quartet by Antonin Dvorak. That's the 12th uh, string quartet he wrote in the United States. Yeah. Spillville, Iowa, to be more specific. Wow. Uh, it was a, it, yeah, that was a, uh, th that town at the time was a Czech-speaking colony. Mm -hmm. So Dvorak and his family felt very comfortable to actually stay there for the amount of time that he did. Along with uh, writing those a series of four quartets. He also started his, the, the the cello concerto and segments of the violin concerto and the Ninth Symphony. So, and curiously enough, uh, you know, the day the music died, supposedly, uh, the plane crash, that eventful, um, that's where it happened in Spillville, Iowa, as well, coincidentally. So, many parallels in music. Yes, and there's of many beautiful elements of uh, Native Native American motifs. I heard. Um, yeah. I think the most popular one that I've been able to configure uh, it's in uh, in A, right? Right. It's the the, the Seminoles, the Florida Se Seminoles. Right. Um, oh, play, or the Brave use it too. Play just the, a the little Atlanta bit Brave. more. A little bit more of that of that theme that you were just oh, doing. Oh, the theme, the Indian. The, the, the one American. you were doing right now. Give us a cup a minute or two. Of that theme. Uh, oh, you want me to play the beginning? No, no, no. The, the yeah, theme the, you well, were just there, doing. Yeah. La, yeah. La, this, la, this, la. this thing. Huh? Right. And then, of course, you can hear um, similarities when you hear uh, the the second. Uh, the sorry, the second, the, the ninth symphony. The. Oh yes. Or if you want to be more uh, luscious or more uh, delightful and, and hymn-like, he does this very famous melody. Right. Right. Or the, in, the, in the actual, uh, in the third or second movement of this particular quartet, the violin gets to play. And, and, and 
he, there's a lot of chromaticism that, that is utilized, which is very common in, in the nationalistic style of music by him. And it's, it's just curious how he's able to impl implement or implement his own characteristics, but still hinting at Americana itself. Right. More, spe and more specifically, the African spirituals mm -hmm. and, and elements of Native American folk music. So yeah, very much a pioneer at this time. What? Tell us when this was actually written. Uh, what did, when specifically? Come on, you That's a good question. Encyclopedia. <laughs> you know, I, I cannot recall the very specific date at this very moment. However, nineteen. Uh, no, it's. Hold on. I have to actually look that up. Well, uh, and I, don't distract yourself with that. I want to talk more yes, about but, what you've been doing. This airport yes. uh, uh, music uh, uh, performance thing that you were participating in, I think, is absolutely wonderful. So, tell us a little bit about this. Uh, yes, uh, the the Jetstream Music Festival is the first time ever that we've implemented a live stream music festival from various locations. So, we're talking about 23 airports of North America. That includes Canada and the United States. We're talking about from Portland to Vancouver, uh, let's see, uh, Cleveland, and then all the way back to San Diego, if you will. So each airport was able to uh, ask a specific artist. They asked me to represent San Diego due to the amount of diversity of music that I allot them throughout the year. So whether it's uh, in the classical idiom or they want me to play more popular music or just improv uh, improvisational ambient music I also can provide that in the moment so it's whatever they ask for me to do that's what I will play and prepare accordingly so that's a and, very and so, creative way for airports to get a little more uh, friendly attention because today I don't think anybody's thinking about airports <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yes and, and, and curiously enough every time I've played there I, it's always been a sense, and there I mean the, the airport proper, whether it's been the baggage claim, Terminal 1, 2, etc. It's always been a question of, as long as you're a, willing to share, and you can try to convey or connect that you are genuinely trying something for them, it's either they will listen or not, and that's okay. But, <laughs> but what's great about it, What's great about it is that they have to go somewhere anyway, so it's not a big deal. Right. You're on your own little island, and you can just promote positive energy and, and tranquility, right? Yeah. Especially before the pandemics. I don't know about your experience or your experience, but I hated going to the airports because this was a pandemonium <laughs> there to try yes. to fly. Fly was got to be so... Uh, such a nightmare, really. Uh, yes, yes, agreed. You know, and especially with all the limitations that we're given now, and specifications right. and that, so about this how brings we need to kind of a humanistic element to this chaos. Yes. Humanistic yes, and curiously and enough, music again trends and uh, transcending yeah. bridges of yeah. of uh, the joy of human connection. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yes, um, that was our, so our airport has it. been promoting live music for 20 years now, so I've been quite lucky to be at a place where they've been doing this for 20 years straight, Good. five to six days a week at least. That's wonderful. So, That's absolutely lovely, yeah. yes. And because, it, uh, and, uh, what? Well, I was just yes. saying it had been a trend. I'm hearing music in the airport is yeah. used to be rather... Uh, maybe that's where concerts might be held these days because they're not going to be in theaters. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, uh, and regarding that, uh, it will be most likely that there will be more collaborative efforts with artists, whether it's um, compiling videos together uh, or, and or doing remote sessions and then playing along to tracks. As you heard or were, was seen as well, I was actually playing to a score on my tablet here. And so I'm actually reading a score in real time. Let me see if I can actually grab it for you so you can actually this see what I'm reading. This is the way the world's going. Yeah, that's right. You see? Yes. The way the world is so going. So now, because everything's so right. mobile, 
you can actually have your entire score here. That's right. And in the top. Can, that's wonderful. Yes, right? and yes, thank you. So I've been able to curate right. the, my parts or all the parts and look at them in right. real time. Right. So it's been a great way to keep the fingers nimble and stay active in these times of not being around people as consistently as one is. So especially mm -hmm. as a strength player, I should say. So. Nico, I'm curious because I know you've all, you know, so for such a long time since you were a little kid. But tell us a little bit about your beginnings, how you began, what motivated you to take up the viola, the violin, who were your teachers, where you started. Tell us your story, your musical story. Well, I, I've been fortunate to be around Jan DeSoco my whole life in the, in the regard of being able to be inspired and motivated by great artistry and creativity, which also brings other great artists and great creative minds, whether it's in the performing arts, dance, music, or visual art, right. sculpture, painting. So my, my humble beginning in that regard has been always a reflection of what I was, was exposed to as a kid with or being around the gallery, in the gallery, experiencing all these musical uh, painting, sculpture moments, whether it was um, her asking me about the gargoyle and the shield, whether it should have a, a crest of a horse or what have you, she would ask a five-year-old, hey, what do you think of this? And I would go, well, <laughs> I think it needs a horse because my uncle, my grandfather, would, ride, would was a horseback rider who, who actually also was a coach of that, you know, in the equestrian <laughs> world. So going into music, the, the only natural thing really? to do was then to give me these trials by fire, playing in front of Olympic committees or oh, wow. very very uh, prestigious banquets or awards and what have you. And as far as instruction and, and how that all go, plays out, uh, mainly it's been re remote um, sessions, if you will, for a summer, going to festivals on the island there and then doing festivals. Uh, this Pablo Casals festival over here, where, right. where he was, Pablo Casals, I don't know if you can see it from here on the camera angle, but yeah. yeah. Well, and, and you also did Suzuki, no? Didn't you? Your oh, yes, mother, yes. Started with Suzuki, for the, sure. About the and, age of uh, three. I was so proud of your mother dragging you to those three. Suzuki yeah, lessons yeah, yeah, yeah. as a sure. little yeah. three-year-old really with a helped. bitty violin. Uh, made. That's yeah, great. Suzuki helped a um, finding a consistent uh, way of practicing. But as things uh, became more uh, intensified and the repertoire gets... Uh, just ample. It's so, so there's so much rep. There, there's endless amounts. Uh, you you have to quickly find other ways and strategies, whether it's having to do recordings of things, videos of things, which is which it is now, to um, having to figure out how to uh, play to click tracks, and that's that's primarily what I'm asked to do now more than ever. I, I fought it for a long time, and I recall having arguments with even you about this at, at, at my very young tender age of 12 and 13 but however life is funny that way how we learn oh wow it comes back eventually and we have to embrace yeah, it or start. not you know right yeah so in that in that in that regard um, it was very helpful to have people who could guide me even um, being inspired by hearing Kiko play any of his solo pieces that he would regale us with or having the uh, the the, um, the guiding light of Henry Hutchinson and the Bonza series, and hearing his various soloists come in to play chamber music in the gallery, it was amazing to hear that as as a child and go, wow, I can't imagine what that could be like, but I can imagine it's almost superhuman or or beyond our own expression or feeling, right? Yes. And uh, as Miles Davis would say. Um, music, playing music is the best experience with your clothes on, and I understand even more now. <laughs> and, and, and so, and, 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 and to have uh, those experiences of having Henry uh, coach me as a kid to now, and then incorporating and, and comp trying to complement as best I can with, with Kiko has been uh, one of the gr greatest feelings in my life. 
to give back and do the best do the best I can right. to, to supplement and provide and uh, give back in it's, in the essence of chamber music. It's great and, to uh, always play with you, and uh, I hope yes, that likewise many many uh, in the future opportunities where we'll collaborate and play together. Yeah, do we yes, have time? We, I, we can go I on. And truly can you play, play something old for us? Yeah, come on. Sure. Um, what have you got there? You don't like your, Ravel? What have you got? I have Ravel, Borodine. I, I mean, it's a little bit of everything. Well, something about I, five, six minutes. Yeah. I think everybody loves it. Yeah, we can do. Hear. Let's just do some Ravel. Oh, wonderful. Wait, wonderful. Wake some people up. That's what I like. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> ah, people. Yeah. Um, I like pretty. Don't mind. Uh, don't mind me, though. Um, let's see. Oh, that's beautiful. Yes. Uh, Ravel only wrote one string quartet. Yes. Uh, alongside WC. If you listen to the Ravel String Quartet, it doesn't sound like as if it follows a structure or a form, but it does ever more so than WC. WC likes to write more as a, a tone poet. He goes for colors and textures more than he does actual forms. And what, what I mean by that is sonata form, rondo form, etc. So this last movement is my favorite just because it just comes out of nowhere. And it always repeats the initial theme. Ah. So, and it's it's always enjoyable to play this to a, for a community center or let's say the airport, and everybody just goes, <laughs> you know, because they don't expect the fourth movement right. to sound like that, right? You come, right? This very very moody cello upper string. Imagine sitting down in a park bench in Paris at three in the morning, smoking a cigarette, say right. la vie. Right. And from that, we go into the fourth moment. All right. Part in the dust. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Betcha, I put the little earbuds in his, because he's used to hearing the music, and, and now he's looking for more. He's saying, oh, where did the concert go? I want to hear more. I want to hear more. Because the only way we hear now with this new setup is through these little earbuds that we've got. What a wonderful work. It's uh, uh, fantastic. Yeah, uh, yeah, it really is. Uh, it, it it's always keeps you on your toes. It has just enough, just the right yeah. amount of mood. Yeah. And uh, the amount of contrast that it conveys between yeah. movements is amazing. It's amazing. And, uh, it's, yeah. it, it was a joy to, to do it in college and represent the Southeast for the, uh, for the was it, it was for the Nationals. Unfortunately, we, we couldn't go to the final round due to inclement weather. And so we had to just do a, a send a videotape of it instead or, or uh, um, an actual video from the university. But... I enjoy my time at, at, at Kennesaw State doing that. It was quite a joy. Yeah. And uh, definitely uh, memories that will remain, remain with me, especially as we are in times as, as, such as these. That's right. And yeah. it's, always, yeah. it's always a joy to share, especially right. uh, repertoire that's so vast and has so much, uh, so much oomph, if you will. Right. And yet yeah, it's so French. You know, you can't. Yes. I mean, the stamp is right there, and it's, it's, yes, it's it, great, great music, and you play it very well. Yes, thank you. It's it, it's quite glorious, and um, yeah. to to me, it's there. There's nothing else like it, and especially doing it as as now in this right. in this environment, it's it's quite unique. It's I I feel so close, but yet there's a right. there's a there's a screen there. You know. Yes. It, it becomes even more tangible, but less at the same time. It's a juxtaposition, if you will. Right. So, well, Nico, well, thank you for having wonderful. me. Well, we have to talk about what's coming up and tell Nico too that our little uh, around the piano at the Cannon Club from the Gallery Inn is definitely something fun and wonderful, and we're live. And we're live from we're the Cannon live. Club. We start in, and you should see us scurrying around. That's right. And um, watch us on YouTube, Instagram, and uh, you can subscribe, right? Yeah, you can yeah. subscribe. We're getting the donate button Follow ready us. soon, so you can uh, help us with the uh, uh, financial end of bringing this together and and um, help to keep these pianos going and the kids that play them. And of course, we want to thank our artists that come on every Absolutely. day. Absolutely. And there's yeah. a wonderful uh, roster of persons to come. Tomorrow, pass me that slip and I'll tell you. We have Wen Wei, who has been here before, a wonderful concert pianist, uh, professor, and uh, uh, performer of the piano, Wen Wei. And after Wen, Wen Wei, uh, we are going to be doing uh, Jeffrey Goldberg on Monday, who was um, assistant conductor, conductor of the Met of the, at Metropolitan the Metropolitan Opera, Opera. House. And we will have uh, Keiju Mori, Mori on uh, Tuesday, yes. on Wednesday, Enrique Graf. Enrique Graf, yeah, the Uruguayan pianist. Oh, he's wonderful. wonderful Keiju is see. fabulous, and he yeah. was the prize winner of the Steinway um, the, Premio the last, the, of, uh, last, the June. Piano, last June. Enrique was the f winner many years ago of the, um, the University of Maryland International Piano Competition. He's been a professor at Carnegie, Carnegie Mellon. 
And we have uh, Ian Hobson Ian coming Hobson back with us. Ian Hobson coming back. Uh, Henry uh, Hutchinson is going to be with us. Next week. And, and uh, Victor, Victor Rosenbaum, Rosenbaum is going to be with us. Rosenbaum, on yeah. From uh, Saturday. Saturday. From Boston. From Boston. Professor and at New England Conservatory. Yes, for 53 pianist. years. He was yes, uh, head yeah. of the piano department at uh, New, New England Conservatory. Right. And on next Sunday, a week, we have Jason Salunius coming back. And so we're keeping the music going in the Cannon Club at the Gallery Inn, the Steinway Society, San Juan, Puerto Rico. San Juan, Puerto Rico. Rico. And right. sharing with our listeners and everyone the joy of the music that we've been sharing here or enjoying here and now we thought this is the time to start broadcasting to all of our friends out there to let everybody know we're keeping the music alive and staying very much in touch with all of our wonderful musical friends from across the world who are so generous and wonderful to join us and share with you and I hope that everybody Kampeche. <laughs> he likes to sit on the chair. Anyway, and I'm just happy that um, everybody's with us. And share this with your friends, everyone. And I think what we're doing is kind of unique because this is a forum where people in the entertainment world, such as musicians, actors, have a chance that to. That we have. Uh, have had actors, musicians, and we have a whole wonderful kinds. collection Not of only pianists, interesting and caring uh, performers players, that are going to be joining us uh, to keep this in very interesting. Singers, opera singers. singers. Yes, we have uh, very many good surprises. We have some very lovely here. things in the plan for everybody, and so stay tuned in. Stay and thank you to Jan the Sopo for this wonderful yes. idea. You, right. it was your well, idea. I just so when wonderful. I started hearing from all of our musical yeah. friends who all the concerts that was can were canceled i said somebody's got to think of something to right do. and as I s as you said we've been saying this can reach everywhere in the world so this is what is so exciting and we have a amalgamation of pianists teachers uh the students uh, of all all uh walks of life let's say and nico I know that you'll be with us many times because I think this is going to go on and I don't know how long, how many um, more weeks ahead of us, but I think actually really it's hard to say the truth, but our world has changed. Yes. Yeah, our well, world is as suddenly. I heard before our, I heard, as, as I heard before our broadcast in the piano room, um, anything goes, right? Anything goes. <laughs> Anything goes, right? Anything goes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> anyway, well, it's such a pleasure to be here. And Nico, you're so uh, wonderful to share your knowledge, your musical talents, and of course, oh, thank uh, you. yourself to be here and chit chat well, a little bit. Make well, it takes one to know one. <laughs> and uh, and I, yeah. I really enjoyed the chemistry um, on that end. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's yeah. what yeah. inspired me my entire life. And to, and to play and to share. <laughs> yeah, uh, they're beautiful. Well, music, I, this is what we believe is that such a wonderful connector during these times. It's yes. really so important to have music in your life. Yeah, absolutely. And absolutely. having the opportunity with us yes. to not only get to know some of the world's best performers, but kind of have personal conversations with you to see and hear what you're doing and what you're up to yeah. and all the things that are happening around your new lifestyle because the theater uh, performance is very much under threat. Definitely. So. And uh, having had two shows that are new Broadway shows um, be postponed until further notice is quite a frightening thing. Yes. Everybody's yeah. had so much change. So this is yeah. our contributions and Absolutely. pulling it all together and keeping you all in front of the the audience and hopefully it will people who are here listening will share this with their friends and their other get a good audience to enjoy this is what Absolutely. we care about. Yes. Kiko, Thank you're you, a good friend. 
Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, so you much. Nico. Thank you, Nico. Wonderful. Thank you for nice seeing you. Good show. Likewise, thank wonderful you. Wonderful show. Wonderful show. Thanks for playing for us and being thank with you for us. Me. And uh, looking forward to seeing you soon. Thank you. Yes, indeed. Much appreciated. Take Ciao. care. Ciao. Bye. Bye.